welcome into the next vlog and this is going to be about the 1900s jimmies that I showed you the beginnings of in the last video and in this video I'm going to finish the jimmies I think in the last video I started with the assembly so if you haven't watched already I would suggest to do that uh, but otherwise I'm going to give a little overview I traced the pattern from a 1930s nightgown and I cut it out and assembled it out of white cotton and I also started adding the pleats. So today I'm going to show you how I finished this thing with neckline and armholes and decoration and also I made another historical garment in between. I bought this beauty that I wanted to buy for quite some time from a fabric shop where I work and it is silk and I just couldn't resist buying it. I looked at it for months and finally said this will be the month where I will not get paid because I spent all of it on that fabric. No, that's just a joke. I didn't spend all my salary on that one. But it was quite expensive for me but for the type of silk it is really cheap. You, uh, it was like a one dime deal. You might wonder what I will make out of this because I do have a project in mind. But I will keep that a little bit of a secret, mainly because I won't be able to start it like in the next year or maybe the year after because I have so much other projects going on and this was not on my top 10 list of things to do. But this fabric is perfect for it, so it is definitely worth buying because if it's gone, then it's gone. So before I put this away, I wanted to show you it again because it's, just such, a, it's such a beautiful fabric. I, I, yeah, never mind. I also bought those two fabrics, which will be a 1920s bikini. And this is something I'm gonna start soon, after I finished my 1950s blouse. Those will be the buttons for it. The buttons will go on the lighter fabric. And that will be my next project again after the 1950s blouse. So stay tuned for that. It will be in the next vlog, I guess. Good thing is, pleating with the fork works wonderfully. The bad thing is that I didn't measure that. Uh, I only measured half of the chemise and then made the pleats. So naturally, this is too small. Yeah. Could have noticed it when I sewed it. I noticed it, but I didn't want to realize it. So I sewed it like this and thought, well. But it's too small. So I'm very conflicted if I should just unpick the whole thing, add the missing panel, re-sew it, as a re-hem re, re it actually, and then repleat it, or if I should just leave it like that and make a 18th century cap out of it because it actually is a great size for that, and redo the whole thing, which means that I am pulled back with my timeline a few days which is not ideal i think about it for a few minutes and then i'll let you know what i'm gonna do with it so i thought about this yesterday evening and i made a cap yeah <laughs> since i had to rip this fringe seam out and then add a new one and i also had this very weird placement of seams like a really short one and i had to add it. It just wouldn't have been like I thought it's it's maybe simpler to make the whole thing new although I now have to spend a few evenings hemming four meters because I just hemmed two here and I was really surprised that it is that quick I could have thought that it was too never mind I now have a cap the cap is a little bit too white but I think if a proper late 18th century hairstyle like hedgehog style it all could work very nicely. And the 18th century, especially the late 18th century, was all over the top. So I think it does, it, it, is, it isn't too bad. Um, I had this seam here because I wasn't left with so much fabric after I recut the 4 meter ruffle or pleat. And so I stitched and pieced it together here, but I don't think it does bother the end result very much. Okay, uh, I recut the whole length of pleats yeah now i have four meters 15 centimeters if i remember correctly and again i hemmed all of this by hand 
I expected this to take much longer because I like needed two hours or something for the two meters. But yesterday we had a lovely Skype uh, meeting, sewing meeting, and it took me like maybe not not that long. I think also two hours, or but I was a lot more concentrated than I was while watching a show. <laughs> so I got it all done in this evening, and you can see four meters is quite a lot. So then it goes up. Uh, so I got it all done last evening, and now I can redo the pleats. So the whole thing is now pleated and I've sewn this as I probably have shown you I'm very close to the edge and now I'm sewing this on into the base dress and let's see if you can see this but I'm stitching very close to the other line but a little bit more downward so the stitching line is hidden so this is going to be a little bit slow but it will look quite pretty when it is finished so it's evening and i have stitched on all the pleats and now i'm working on the seam allowance maybe i'm just like whip stitch it down or something so it doesn't fray too much but i don't worry about it too much uh, the thing that makes me wonder a little bit more is that when I wear it, the pleats are very fluffy, like they really stand out and it looks kind of weird. Also, this whole thing has gotten quite a bit long, which bothers me a bit now. Uh, I didn't want it that long, but never mind. But it still bothers me that the pleats like really pop out. So I'm thinking that I might stitch them down, maybe by hand, maybe by machine, just with a running stitch going around so it just stays a little bit more in and it just goes straight down and not poof, poofing out like that. It looks just a little bit weird. <laughs> so yeah, that's the whole thing and I'm gonna do that. So yesterday evening I spent the time sewing. Well, big surprise. Um, but what I did is I stitched the pleats together at the bottom with so running stitches basically that are longer at the back and smaller at the front. I stitched this together so it looks not too prominent and now I like it much more because the pleats go straight down and not like poof out in this weird shape. It looks but much better to me and it has this big advantage that when I wash the chemise the pleats will stay put and I don't have to re-iron them every time I washed it. So yeah, that's what I did and I also zigzagged this edge right here. Just with the zigzag stitch, oh god that's a word, of my machine. Uh, yeah, couldn't bother more to do more. And now I'm gonna sew on the lace here. Uh, yesterday I sewed on the lace. Basically just with a straight stitch on the machine. I could have done it by hand, but I prefer the machine. I don't really care. And yeah, it was quite problematic because my machine was a little bit stupid. And due to that, when I put the dress out, when I took the dress out, I got stuck with my hem stitch on the foot of the machine. And then I pulled the stitch out. Which means that it was gathered and bunched up like this and I had half of a breakdown. But I did manage to like... I, I thought about restitching it, but I managed to pull the stitch in, in place again. But still there's this little loop here left, which is a little, little bit stupid. Uh, I'm gonna have to find a place for it. Or make a knot and tie it off or hide it. I don't know what I do with it. But I really didn't want to restitch the hem, especially because right here, like I tacked this quite close and I think it's a little bit problematic. Here, you can see my mistake I made. This, there is a seam here inside and one pleat is a little bit longer than the other and it didn't look as bad when it was like straight and now that I pleated it looks horrible and it's right in the middle front but yeah okay uh, 
to the academic scene and due to that my arm really hurts so I can't do much sewing wise so I did this annoying thing that I zigzagged it while the arm was still quite well so I have enough for hand sewing then. I luckily could choose to use my left arm so my right arm is intact and I can stitch with that. So I got quite far. As I said, I zigzagged, zigzagged this edge right here. So it doesn't fray much when I will sew the lace on because this will be left raw underneath. The stupid thing about this uh, eyelet lace here is that it is not intended to be used like that. It was part of a bigger lace and it had two edges on both sides and I cut it away because I used the lace on something else and I saved this part because, well, it looks quite historical. And to get rid of this raw edges I stitched some lace on here, so all the raw edges under here are hidden. And I'm going to do the exact same to the top here. And basically what I am doing is making like a new lace. <laughs> uh, this is actually something used for curtains, like for those they have those farmer curtains here in Austria, this very lacy ones, and people like to use it for that. And now I'm gonna stitch this on all around, and yeah, and I'm very glad I can do that. Yesterday evening was quite productive, and I am very eager to finish this thing today. You see, I sewed all the lace on both edges, and now I have a really pretty neckline. I also finished uh, armholes. And I just did a rolled hem and stitched it on by hand. It was a bit annoying to do because I had all those curves, but it worked out quite easily. And basically, and basically the chemise would be done by now. But first of all, I need to thread my silk ribbon through this. And also want to have the monochrome on it. Which will go on the hem. Uh, it doesn't have a purpose, just because. I want to classically embroider something, and I mean because monograms are really really cool. So I designed something, this here, that's just a regular sheet of copying paper that I can get in a craft store, and I'm gonna trace it onto my dress, and then spend some time embroidering it. And I have to just pick my embroidery thread which I wanna use. The silk ribbon is light blue, that is the silk ribbon. It's a very light blue, it will look quite grayish on the camera, but it is in fact light blue and you see it and it's bunched together, but it's very, very light. And I want to find something matching in here, that would be a gray. I don't want gray, I want blue. Oh god, this is chaotic, chaotic. This is a very light blue here. Oh yeah, we'll go with this one. So this blue repeat somewhere. This is a very nice color combination, that's good. Also, something unrelated, but today morning I was at flea market and I found these tiny shoes. They're adorable. They're from a brand. They're called Just the Right Shoe and I researched a little bit and they're like something for collectors. And there are like various kinds of shoes and there are some historic ones. And I got three historic shoes. These are very cute 18th century shoes. And I mean the details and everything. And I love the shape because it's so accurate. They're porcelain, I think. And they're so detailed, like with the folds and everything. And those are Edwardian, I think. Not quite sure, but I think they're Edwardian. They also have a satin rim on them. So beautiful. So I had to have them, even though they're completely useless just for decorating purposes. They're so cute. I had to show them. Okay, this really doesn't work with the copying paper, but that was a complete fail. I will now place this, because it's white anyway, I'm gonna place it under the garment and then retrace it with a pencil or something.
just saw some pictures of me wearing the new chemise and I'm really happy with how it turned out. It is a little bit long for my taste, but I said that in the last video as well, I think. But other than that, I'm really happy with how it turned out and I'm looking forward to wearing it under the opera gown if it will ever get finished. So this is sort of a part of the opera gown journey because, well, it is made for that. And I'm still at the embroidery, <laughs> but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So I may update you. There are only three, four flowers to, fit, to, to add the sequins to, and at the back there is one long line and maybe some flowers to add sequins to, and that should be it with the embroidery part, except for the sleeves. But for the main garment, that should be it. And I'm already at my second package of sequins, the first one being about 4,000 sequins, and this one again being 4,000, but I just started with that package. So there will be a lot of sequins involved if this part ever, ever comes out. Probably a lot later than I want to, but so be it, that's a creative hobby. So if you like this video, give me a like or tag me in the comments and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss on all the other things going on. In the next video I'm probably going to show you how I finished the 1950s blouse that I started in the last vlog. So stay tuned for that and have a good week!